Okay, so what we're going to look at here is the Google Research tool, and this is a tool that uh, I wish was around when I was at school. It sort of would made life a lot easier. Um, it's a really handy tool for teachers to use in classrooms where their kids have got access to one-to-one -to -one devices because you're not going to find your kids constantly jumping between browser windows when they're looking for research and when they're trying to write an essay. Um, but as a teacher, you also need to be aware of probably how easy it is to get quick information out of this and, and be aware that uh, we just don't want our kids copying and pasting information. Um, so use it wisely, but it is a really handy tool uh, once you see the potential of it. So I've just put together this mock essay on Albert Einstein here, and I've just started it off with a sentence. And I'm going to jump into the research tool. So there's a couple of different ways you could do it. You can either select the text and then go to tools and hit research. We don't have to select anything and it'll just load up a blank search. By default, when it loads up, it will load up with just a mixture of images and information on Albert Einstein. And if I just wanted to quickly get an image or something into my presentation, uh, I can just drag and drop that in. And you'll notice straight away that it's put this little footnote here and it's referenced where that picture's come from, which is really handy. And I'll talk about the referencing in a moment. Okay, so if I found a web art, an article on the web that I'm interested in, I can click the preview button here and it'll give me a bit of a preview of what's on the page. Um, that's pretty handy at times. You can see whether it's full of advertising or whether it's mainly text or videos or whatever it is that you're after. And then I might want to quick click into that page and actually have a read of it. And from reading that information, I'm obviously going to come up with some words of my own as a student and I'm going to write them into my essay. And if I want to cite anything from that um, site that I've just been at, I can do a few different things. I can either insert a link to it or I can cite it. You'll see again here our footnotes are changed um, at, the, at the bottom. Uh, and alternately, if I want to link to that page, I can just pop a link in there and um, people can follow up and find out where I've got that information from. The thing that we might have a look at in a little bit more detail here, if you click on the little drop down arrow, you can just get a web search, which is your general everything here. But if you want specific images about Einstein, you can click on these ones here. What's handy for students is you can filter um, non-commercial images that are free to use. Um, you're not going to be breaking any copyright laws or anything if you use them in assignments or kids are using them for different things at schools. And once again, you just literally drag and drop the picture where you want it and um, insert it into your Google Doc. While I'm here and we're on this part of it, this is talking about the citation format now. Now at the moment you can choose from three versions, which is the MLA, the APA or the Chicago referencing style. And if you switch between these styles of referencing, it will change it uh, for all for your whole assignment. The option here for Scholar actually takes you to proper educational journals that have been written about your topic. So if I click into one of these here, um, I can click in here and it'll take me to this journal. And some of these books are actual books for sale. Some of these books are ones that are available online, academic journals and everything that you can view online. Um, you're going to have to filter through them a little bit, but they're proper educationally regarded um, journals that you can use uh, instead of just getting your information from Wikipedia or the like there. The next one that we'll come to is quotes. So these will be quotes about Albert Einstein, um, either by him or about him. And these are really easy to pop into your essay if, you wanna, if you've written something here and you want to quote to back it up. So if I just pop in a fresh line here, um, I can find this quote and all I need to do is hit insert. There's his quote and it's again referenced in my essay. The next one that we've got in here is dictionary. Now, if you're looking up a person, you're not going to get any results, but if you want a definition for um, something like the atom, you didn't really know what that was, um, it's going to give you some dictionary def definitions on this and you can click into these and find out further information.
The final one that we're going to have a look at here is the tables and unfortunately you can't insert a table directly into your essay. A table is a list of st statistics or facts um, that have been pulled from various sites around the, uh, the internet. For instance, if I type in a capital city, it'll generally give me things like rainfall, and population and all of those different things. Um, and these may be relevant to you if you want to preview any of these. You can get a better view of them here. You can copy and paste things from them or you can just cite them into your essay. So in a nutshell, that is the Google Research tool, um, a really handy thing for your students to use. Um, it keeps them all on the one space when you're wanting them to find out information. It keeps your searches ad free so they're not going to find things that are inappropriate or irrelevant, we'd hope. Um, and it just speeds up the process of finding and, and adding um, footnotes and links and, and decent uh, resources for putting together a good essay. So I hope you enjoy that and I'll be back with more um, ideas shortly.